Hello, my name is Laura Mosqueda, and I'm delighted that we can show you what the next phase of your training could look like. Tech School of Medicine, we pride ourselves on challenging paradigms and thinking outside of the box. The amount of exposure that we get as students at LA County and Keck and all these different sites is incredible. The training you get here is as hands-on as it could be. Good morning, Mr. Reed. Oh, do you have the CT scan? Yeah. Let's pull up that CT scan. So this is the CT scan from the first day. We take on the toughest challenges, the toughest cases. We take on the biggest questions for research to try and make a difference and improve human health. We are smack in the middle of it all, right here uh, in this health sciences campus. So we have a county hospital right across the street that has incredible, not only inpatient, but ambulatory facilities. Right across the street in the other direction, we have our Keck Hospital with wonderful ambulatory and outpatient surgery sorts of facilities. Then on my right, we have our Norris Comprehensive Cancer Hospital. And then just across the street, we have our major research buildings too. Research and education are really the foundations upon which everything else at the School of Medicine is, is founded on. You have multitudes of opportunities to do bench work, uh, clinical research, translational research, and really take your work from the bench side to the bedside. Hello. Hello. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? I'm well, thanks. Morning. This week, in fact, we've had a sickle cell patient, an aplastic anemia patient who came for treatment. We get uh, TTP patients. We have three to five autologous stem cell transplant patients on at any given time. I've been here 44 years, and there's two common foundational principles. Number one, patient interests supersede self-interest. This is absolutely critical. Your levels are coming down, looking good. Um, so you're thinking discharge? Yeah, I think you can go home today. Yes. Uh, yeah. <laughs> the second is that this is a teaching center, and we talk about the very famous professors that are here to teach you. But the one thing everybody learns is that the master teachers are the patients themselves. And so, sir, we're going to show you what you actually had before and after. Okay. okay. This is what you came in with. <laughs> That's what you came in with. <laughs> Nearly locked out that entire lung, right? Yeah. Oh my gosh. You must have a passion. Part of your mission is to take care of the underserved. We are serving the underserved. We are serving those that are more socioeconomically advantaged. But essentially, you want to serve everyone and everybody and serve them the same, regardless of who they are. So who's our next patient? In here? Yeah. Okay. Yes. These are the patients that, you know, it's not just a pleasure to serve, it's an honor to serve. They're my people. It's, I see myself reflected in the, in the population. I really wanted to come back home in more ways than one. This could be my mom. This could be my dad. This could be my uncle. Um, and no other place could afford me that opportunity besides here. It's been a, the most challenging and rewarding thing I've done in my life, being here. Uh, I've been pushed in ways that I didn't think were possible. We're looking for that spark, that spark in a person that's going to become a good physician who's going to put the patient first. Can we get Dr. Dixon here, please? Can we get some backup? No matter how dramatic this scenario is, it's something that happens. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. We are pretty much in the ORs from day one. We do cases that other places um, just read about in textbooks. You really want to care for the caregiver. Um, our goal is to prevent burnout before it even happens. It takes about eight months till you start thinking, I can do this, I can master this. Do you see anything worrisome at all? No, I don't. This is not a movie. This is for real. Can you show us two fingers? It's really important that not only do they listen to what the attending has to say, 
but equally important, the attending needs to listen to what the resident has to say. Show me where your pain is. We're here to learn. There's no dumb questions ever. We really want an inclusive environment where you can be the thought and the change leader on our campus. If you come to USC, you will be part of a close-knit, collaborative Trojan community. It's so important to know that you're part of the Trojan family. That's not just a catchphrase here, it's something that we really need. We care about the people who are here. We care about you after you leave. It's a lifelong commitment on our part. Hello, my name is Chelsea Jackson, and I am the Residency Program Director for the Anesthesiology Residency Program at the University of Southern California, LAC plus USC Medical Center. We have 18 residents per class, and we're a categorical program, which means we span all four years of postgraduate training. So in total, we have 72 residents. We also have about 75 faculty. We also have nurse anesthetists, about 50 nurse anesthetists that work with us, but we're always recruiting. So our faculty numbers and our nurse anesthetist numbers are expected to grow. I think one of the unique things about the program at LAC plus USC is the diversity in both patient population as well as the diversity in clinicians that we're able to recruit from all over the country. We have two large hospitals on our same campus. So our residents get to participate in trauma, in obstetrics, in peds procedures while at LA County. And they don't get to participate in transplants at LA County. However, our private hospital, our Keck Medical Center, is a transplant magnet source. So we do a lot of transplants there, as well as other very complex cases. The educational program we have structured is very unique in that it specializes for each year of training that our residents are involved in. So for our interns, we have a weekly didactic session specifically geared towards the needs of the intern. For our CA1s on the same morning at the same time in another location, which is Zoom currently because of social distancing, we have a different set of lectures, a different lecture series that's geared towards the information that we need to cover during that year of training and so on. So each year that our residents are training with us, the educational curriculum changes and advances to incorporate all the important aspects for that level of training. One of the things that we like to do for our third years is we like to expose them during their first three years to all of the subspecialties as well as all of the basic anesthesia techniques so that during their third year they can allow us to help specialize what things they need to participate in. It's a very, I think, team dynamic approach to training our residents and making sure that we have resident representatives on the curriculum team to help us structure those sessions. First, as an intern, our residents are learning how to be doctors. So for example, they're participating in various surgical subspecialties as well as medicine subspecialties. The things that they need to learn are more holistic care of the patient, the pre-operative and post-operative involvement. Once they go to their CA1 year, which is traditionally their PGY2 year, they're in the operating rooms with us every day and they're learning the basics of anesthesiology. As they complete that year and move on to their second year, they have already been exposed to a lot of the basic cases as well as some of the subspecialties. And we complete their subspecialty training during that PGY3 or what we also call our CA2 year. By the time they get to their PGY4, which is also their CA3 year, they have participated in every subspecialty. They've taken care of both the basic surgical procedures as well as the more complex surgical procedures. And we've added the dynamic of the complexity of the patient. Um, so they are able to rise with each level in their educational sessions as well as in their clinical experience. One of the things we noticed as a trend over the last 10 years since I've been with uh, LAC USC is the desire for more specialized training in anesthesiology. So we have residents where 
they finish their residency with us, but they really want to specialize in cardiac anesthesiology. And so they will do additional training as a fellow in cardiac anesthesiology or neuroanesthesiology, both of those fellowships we offer. And one of the things that we wanted to do was try to get them exposure early in their training to be able to determine if going into a fellowship is something that they would like to do. Traditionally, those subspecialties were reserved until the PGY3 year, but we've managed to pull a lot of their first experiences into the second half of their PGY2 year, allowing them a capability to explore a little more deeply something that they may want to pursue as a specialty career. In addition, we've also provided them with a fellowship fair. Every Every year. I think this would be the seventh year that we've had a fellowship fair. And basically, once a year, we invite all the residents who are interested to come and get a brief presentation from each of the subspecialty directors, either within our institution or in our neighboring institutions. And it allows them to ask questions, to make connections with those fellowship directors, to get more information, to make sure that they're making the right choice for their career. I'm most proud of my residents. Their successes um, bring such joy to my heart and to the rest of my faculty members. My name is Barak Katabian, and I'm a fourth year resident in the USC Department of Anesthesiology. The main reason that myself and many of my colleagues chose to come to USC is because uh, USC has a reputation for training very clinically strong physicians. There's a saying within the Department of Anesthesiology that if you graduate from USC, when you go out into the community, nothing can scare you. And uh, the reality has definitely matched the rumors. Um, you see a lot of stuff very quickly, um, all the way from your first trauma call and your first anesthesia year to doing these big transplants uh, in your third year. So you do see a lot and you see it very early on. I remember my first trauma call. Um, I was in my third month of um, my CA1 year, it was the first anesthesia year. And uh, I remember just feeling very nervous and I just remember um, with trauma it's a unique situation because you never know what's coming. So you're just kind of on standby all night. And I just remember uh, we have a term called RB, which uh, it stands for red blanket because uh, in the old county days, um, when somebody had a trauma or got shot or stabbed, they throw a blanket on them. Some people say it was because it was a physical red blanket they put on them. Other people say it was a white blanket that became red by the time they got to the OR. Um, so you're just waiting for these uh, RBs all night. And sometimes you get them nonstop. So you see a lot very early on. So I remember the first time I was on call, um, a trauma came in and I had almost this paralyzed look of what do I do, what do I do? Um, and now, as a senior resident, I'm the senior on call. So I'm the one that's directing the junior residents, like, you get the pressures going, you start uh, fluid resuscitation, you pull these drugs out. Um, so really, seeing it now, it, it's a huge difference from being shocked and not knowing what to do to now being calm and be able to coordinate everything. We do heart, lung, liver, kidney, and uh, they come in at all times of the night. So um, you are always, you get called, you go in and you do it. They're usually very sick patients to require a transplant, uh, especially the liver. So we're always excited to do those types of cases. Okay. The patient uh, just went non-responsive, her blood pressure dropped. The first time you see something really scary, we would like you to have some training beforehand. So USC does a great job with uh, sim and simulation training. So uh, they put us in these uh, unique scenarios where, you know, it's always a scenario that the worst possible thing that could happen happens. And when you see that, uh, it's usually a situation you haven't encountered before. So you really go back to the times you've studied and the lectures you've gotten and, okay, what did I read? What am I supposed to do? And you tried your best to troubleshoot the situation. Um, and sometimes you do the exact perfect thing and everything works out great. And sometimes you have things that you can improve on for next time. Um, but those simulation sessions are really valuable for giving us the exposure and really putting us in that situation of what we would do if something like this happened. It's sometimes difficult for people to suspend reality. Um, it is sometimes hard when you are with your peers and you're already a little bit nervous, but now you have others around you watching you. Uh, it makes it a little, I think, challenging at first, but our residents jump right in. After the first few minutes in simulation, they 
are able to actually believe that they are in this situation. I think setting it up in such a way that we imitate true life activities uh, allows us to more easily suspend reality and do what simulation is supposed to do, provide us an opportunity to simulate difficult situations where urgent care is needed and actually move through those processes. How's right. the patient doing? Her blood pressure's going up. Blood pressure's slowly coming up. Yes. Thank you. She's responding to epinephrine. Sometimes just reading it, just learning it, just hearing about it is not really enough. And so in the way that we train our residents, we like to use a multimodal approach. We will use cadavers and soft tissue lab for training regional blocks. We will use simulation to help them get used to dealing with some of the very rare conditions that we might not have an opportunity for them to see in real life with a real patient. We also use our lecture series, our mentoring program, our simulated OSCE system that we created several years ago where our residents are taken through patient interactions, discussing difficult topics, working through giving patients bad news in a simulated safe environment. Well, one thing that makes USC really unique is we're exposed to a lot of different hospital systems early on. Um, the two main sites that we rotate through are LAC USC Medical Center and Keck Hospital. LAC USC is truly, um, you know, a safety net hospital. It's where the underprivileged, uninsured um, go there to get the care that they otherwise wouldn't be able to get. On the flip side, Keck Hospital, it's a tertiary surgical referral center. So um, there's no ER. The volume from that hospital comes from referrals um, from surgeons in the community that these are surgeries that people don't want to touch because the patients are too sick or something's going on and the surgeries are too complex. So they send them to Keck. Um, so the benefit of that is not only do we see two different patient populations, but the types of surgeries and the things that they do are very different between the two. Um, at LA County, it is a burn center. So you take care of burns, you take care of high-risk OB. It's a level one trauma center. So you're dealing with trauma all night when you're on call. When you're on neurology rotation here, you do a lot of cranies, you do a lot of head trauma. Um, Transition that over to Keck, you know, it's that private hospital. So your neurology rotation looks more like a lot of spine surgery. Um, and that's great, there's value to both, but you get to see both and that's something unique. It's not only a county facility and it's not only private, it's a hybrid. So you see lots of different systems. They leave us feeling strong. They leave us uh, feeling secure in their education and they will not hesitate to reach back to us and let us know how they're doing. We have great relationships with the residents that we've graduated, and I think we have quite a tradition here at LAC USC. Once you've done a residency or a fellowship here, you are ready for the next phase of your career. And that might be going into clinical practice, it might be going into academia, it might be going on for more training, whatever it is, be assured that you are going to be the most well-prepared person possible for that next part of your career.